Well, hello and welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Olivia and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a senior here at Western. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming here for the 2021 Student Sustainability Summit. We have a fun afternoon planned for you all. Quick reminder that this will be a signature event. So if you click the link in the chat, you can record your attendance and get that on your degree. Also, this summit is being recorded, so this event can reach people who were unable to attend today. So in this call today, we have um, 20 different student organizations across campus and over 70 students. Additionally, we are joined by different various Western faculty, staff, and other members of the Kalamazoo community. We would first like to acknowledge our collaborators, helpers, mentors, and key supporters, Dr. Denise Keel, the WMU Climate Change Working Group, Mr. Jeff Spolstra, the Office for Sustainability, and the Western Student Association. Thank you for lending us a helping hand during the planning of this event. We also want you to know that there are several senior leaders here from the WMU administration, and they're with us today from areas like government affairs, research and innovation, construction, research, recycling, and the Board of Trustees. I'd also like to give a huge shout out and thank you to each and every one of you guys for being here and coming here on a Saturday afternoon for such an important discussion exploring the broad themes of climate change. You are all so incredible for being here. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to go pass it over to Ida. Thank you, Olivia. Hi, everyone. My name is Ida. I use she her pronouns and I am a senior in Western majoring in environmental and sustainability studies and a student staffer here in a sustainability office. Um, so before we get started, it's important to us that we recognize Western Michigan University is located on lands historically occupied by the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. Please take a moment to acknowledge and honor this ancestral land of the Three Fires Confederacy, the sacred lands of all indigenous peoples and their continued presence. So what brings us all here today? The 2021 Student Sustainability Summit gathers students from various interests, backgrounds, and experience to explore our understanding, concerns, and inspire actions we can do to address campus sustainability and climate change. We are here to, we are here to learn as much as we are here to share. And I am sure a lot of you are familiar with the phrase, no one knows everything, but together we know a lot. We will be hearing from so many of you who will each be offering different and new perspectives to the table. We ask that you be respectful respectful of each other and assume best intentions of one another. As you know, we are working in a virtual environment. We ask that you stay muted when someone is speaking to avoid interrupting the flow. But And last but not least, don't forget to have fun. And now I'm going to kick it off to Chelsea to give us a run through of the agenda for today. Thanks, Ada. Hi, everyone, and thank you again for being here. My name is Chelsea Spamman, and I'm a senior here at Western studying behavior analysis and environmental studies and sustainability. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Western Student Association Vice President for Sustainability. We're gonna begin by introducing our main focus, climate change. And then we will spend a couple minutes applying some background information about Western's current climate action commitments. Next, we'll be talking about the $500 grant funding opportunity. And then we're gonna have some time for students and RSOs to have three minutes uninterrupted to introduce their groups and talk about their perspective on climate change and sustainability. Then we're gonna have a short five minute break and then after all the student leaders have their chance to talk, we will go into breakout rooms for student leaders to lead a more in-depth discussion about their topic of interest with other attendees. You may also, you may also meet non-student guests in the breakout rooms. This will kind of be like a tabling event. And then after about 15 minutes of discussion, we will all come back together to report. And lastly, we'll talk about where we might go from here as a collective group. And now I'm gonna throw it back to Olivia. Thank you so much, Chelsea. So this year's focus of the summit, as you know, is climate change. 91% of you said that climate change is an important issue to your group or your student group. So what is climate change? Climate change, as you know, is the change in global climate patterns. It is a symptom of global warming, which is largely attributed to an exponential increase in atmospheric carbon due to human activities. You answered this for us. So take your phones out and scan the QR code that is on the slide and on your screen right now so you can see all of your different definitions of climate change. Clearly, all of you know the concept of climate change pretty well and seem to appreciate the urgency of this crisis. Climate change impacts beyond the aesthetics of our environmental landscapes. It's a crisis that will and already poses measurable threats to our economy, social and economic and ecological well-being. 
Importantly, climate change is a collective problem that needs collective action. It is without a doubt that climate change impacts us in ways big or small. We need every single voice and strong unity to overcome this crisis. This is why you all are here to offer new and different perspectives of the climate crisis. So before we move forward, we'd like to hear from you. What are you most worried about with climate change? And feel free to type your answers in the chat. Um, while everyone is typing, I will share mine. Um, climate change disproportionately impacts marginalized communities of color who are especially vulnerable to the environmental risks that will, that will be exacerbated by this crisis. Um, so um, looks like from Jeff, climate change just making the biodiversity crisis worse. It can affect animals immigrants in our future, the impact on future generations, the longevity of life, quality in human, mass extinction, food scarcity, biodiversity again, and people not believing in it. Yes, an accurate and measurable reduction of emissions, political conflict, nuclear war, and all of these answers are, are true and valid and um, they are concerning. And thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'll let you still type your answers in the chat um, as we progress through the, through the event. Um, so for additional aid in understanding the urgency of the climate crisis, we invite you to explore resources available online for free provided by the Kalamazoo Climate Crisis Coalition. Links for all the resources mentioned will be provided in a post-summit packet delivered to your inbox, or you can just scan this QR code. Um, now I'm gonna pass it over to Chelsea again. So we're gonna take a moment to talk about Western's current climate commitments. About 10 years ago, Western committed to becoming carbon neutral by the year 2065. There's a 30 page climate action plan written in 2012 available online that covers the approaches and steps university intended to take to achieve carbon neutrality. And we put a QR code on the slide so you can check out the document. We also have the newly formed WMU Carbon Neutrality Committee, which met for the very first time last week. The committee is revisiting our carbon neutrality commitment and target date, and we'll be mapping out more specific strategies to get us to our goal faster. Students are represented on this committee and there's room for one or two more. In addition to this, the WMU Office for Sustainability tracks the campus greenhouse gas emissions and has these reports published on their website. And lastly, it's essential to highlight the efforts of the Climate Change Working Group, an interdisciplinary group of faculty, staff, and students dedicated to increasing climate crisis awareness on and off campus. The working group is constantly educating the public and creating new climate and sustainability content across research and teaching. And now I'm gonna pass it off to Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff from the Office for Sustainability. We wanna take a moment to recognize our $500 project grant applicants. There were 28 submissions. Thank you for your creative, innovative, and exciting ideas. The word cloud you see on your screen was created using your submissions. Some of these ideas were brand new. Some of them complement programs and initiatives that are already underway at Western Michigan University. Others might be best advanced through a WSA student government resolution, a funded educational campaign, or a larger student sustainability grant project for more than $500. The word more is prominent and consistent with input we get when we conduct periodic campus-wide surveys of the student body. We often hear the word more in reference to more grant funding opportunities, more storytelling, more recycling, more waste reduction, more composting, more rental bikes, more on-campus food production and gardening. Summit organizers and the Student Sustainability Grant Allocations Committee, a committee made up of students from every college at Western Michigan University, will narrow down ideas that are safe, legal, feasible and that can be led by the authors or led by an RSO or the Office for Sustainability or by groups already working on similar campus sustainability initiatives. We will follow up with you all shortly after today's summit so you can help us celebrate the winning idea and see how we can respond to all the ideas that were submitted. Thanks for your ideas and participation in the summit. Chelsea, back to you. All of your ideas were really great. We want to make sure that you are aware of the Student Sustainability Grant Program that will fund up to $30,000 of projects this spring. The March 29th deadline is approaching pretty fast, so if you're too swamped this semester to apply, then we encourage you to apply in fall of 2021 or the spring of 2022. Additional opportunities include participating in research about student leadership in climate change administered by Ida, who will reach out to you individually after this presentation. You can also get involved with student government, Western Student Association, in our various open positions that will start this spring 
one such being the Vice President for Sustainability. And this is a particularly special opportunity to work with a group of dedicated students who are diligently trying to make better for w WMU students. You can work with WSA to develop and pass student resolutions in support of advancing your climate change or sustainability initiatives. And you can even get a start on this today by heading to the WSA breakout room and talking to our current student leaders. Additionally, myself and student body president Taylor West are planning a two-part environmental justice panel to address the history and origins, as well as current impacts and community-based solutions to environmental racism. This event will take place March 11th and March 18th from 4 to 5.30, so feel free to drop in. And lastly, keep a lookout for the annual student sustainability survey in your inbox in the next month or so. It's important that we hear from you all again. All right, so now we're getting to the bread and butter of our main event. Now it's all about you guys. We now invite all of the students and groups who have requested minutes from the agenda to have their three minutes to speak uninterrupted about climate change. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with our first student in RSO, Keaton Connolly from Students for a Sustainable Earth. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Keaton Connolly and I am the representative today for the Students for a Sustainable Earth. Um, I'd first just like to um, start by thanking the Office of Sustainability for like putting together this summit, um, we think it's very beneficial, a very beneficial event um, for anybody interested in like environmentalism and um, just, just great learning experience as well. Um, and giving us the opportunity to talk about our club. Um, so the Students for Sustainability, Sustainable Earth is a registered student organization and uh, we meet and collaborate on the interest of environmentalism. And um, here at SSE, we seek to empower students into activism and uh, environmental stewardship in uh, both the Western uh, campus as well as surrounding communities. Um, as far as like our philosophy on uh, climate change, as well as um, other uh, daunting um, threats such as uh, like landfills piling up and pollution of the earth. Our philosophy is like these, these are very daunting, um, daunting crises that are happening. However, we kind of see it as we can only do what we can do as individuals. And that's really what we're about. We're, we're about finding um, ways to live our life, the choices of our life in such a way that is as sustainable as possible and will benefit the earth and its future. Um, some examples of things that we do as a RSO um, I have listed here is we have been in the past associated with organizing climate strikes. There was a climate strike back in 2019, I believe in September, that we um, had a big part of um, getting organized and it was a very, very much a success. Um, I believe this picture here is from that, that climate strike. Um, we also have participated and held uh, community events, um, whether it be at Western itself or uh, in the surrounding communities. Um, some examples would be um, like sharing vegan uh, recipes with um, students at Western, as well as um, clothing exchanges. Um, thirdly, we another example is we uh, take a stand on local issues, uh, whether it be like in the Kalamazoo uh, community. Um, so, so that's something else that we do. Um, Fourthly, uh, spreading awareness um, and just informing the general population um, is another aspect of what we like to do at um, Students for Sustainable Earth. And um, fourthly, practicing sustainable living. And this kind of ties into what I was mentioning is um, living in such a way where we can be as sustainable as possible. And that brings me to um, our weekly meetings. So we, um, every, every Wednesday at 8 p.m., we have a virtual meeting on Zoom where we have one of the uh, members of our club give a kind of specialized talk on 
um, sustainability and environmentalism. Um, here are a few of examples of these talks. Uh, just last week, one of our members gave one on recycling. Um, next week, we'll have one um, on biodiversity and climate change. And then the week following that, we have one um, on vegan recipes. So you can uh, just tune in to these events. They're all virtual on Zoom. You can find us on um, W Experience WMU, um, as well as you can contact us here at this link. Um, and you can just simply click a button and join us and I can get you on the email list and you can start attending the meetings and learning about ways that you can uh, be more sustainable in your life. I think that's all I have for um, today. Thank you. Um, thanks, Keaton. Um, so the next person uh, would be Eden from the Climate Change Working Group and the Comas Climate Crisis Coalition. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Eden Latham. I am a sophomore at WMU studying climate or global and international studies and poli sci. My pronouns are she and her. First, I wanna give a big shout out to Ida and Chelsea and Olivia and everyone that worked so hard to make this event happen, regardless of all the amazing outcomes of it. The feed alone that we were able to gather such a large group of people to talk about climate change and discuss climate change is just amazing enough. Um, so I work at the Office for Sustainability as the Climate Change Communication Specialist, and as such, I do communication work for the Climate Change Working Group and the Kalamazoo Climate Crisis Coalition. They are different groups, but the CCWG is a member group of the coalition, so the two work together on many events and projects, and a lot of the members are interchangeable. Um, so we have many amazing events and opportunities always going on. Uh, first and foremost, I want to promote our Fridays for Future. Um, this started with in August of 2018 with Greta Thunberg with her and other student activists walking out of their schools to do sit-ins in front of the Swedish parliament to protest the lack of action against the climate crisis. Um, according to her Instagram, they are on week 132 of this climate protest. So many of our Fridays for Future events include guest speakers. Yesterday, we had an amazing presentation on environmental justice from WM, WMU's own Dr. Sabelle Shattuck. It was amazing. Um, also, Earth Week is coming up uh, because every day should be Earth Day. We promote a whole week to it. Um, so look on our socials for all the amazing events and information that we are going to be promoting. We also have an amazing book club that gets together every month to discuss climate related books. This week's, this month's book is Climate Courage. So please join us for that. Um, in the upper right hand corner, we have a picture from our 2019 climate strike. I saw some of you talking about that in the chat. Due to COVID-19, we haven't been able to do any of those in-person opportunities, but we hope to resume them soon. Also, students, we have a, we have a climate change studies minor. So if you are undeclared on your minor or you want to do something much cooler, it is a great interdisciplinary minor open to all students. Um, highly recommend. It'll get you ready for any job in the 21st century work field. So also follow us as part of my job. It's my job to promote our socials. So I wanna see all of you pulling out your phones right now and following us on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Also join our email list for the Climate Change Working Group to be up to date on all of our events and promotions and meetings. You can scan the barcode on the screen to do that. Awesome, thank you so much, Eden. Um, just. Just a note, uh, we have timer on these slides, so um, uh, feel free to use that as a guide. Uh, we wanna try to stay within three minutes because we have a lot of speakers lined up. Um, yeah, and we will go to our next person. We have Crystal from the Office for Sustainability. Hello, uh, everyone can hear me? <laughs> Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm Crystal. I am currently working towards a PhD in electrical engineering, but I also work for the Office for Sustainability as a project coordinator. Um, so I mostly do composting things, but at the Gibbs house, we also do gardening things and we have volunteer hours from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Friday. So come out and join us and learn about composting and gardening. It's super fun. Um, I also would like to promote my workshop 
if you want to learn more about uh, composting uh, March 4th. So it's coming up next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. And it is via Zoom. So you'll see it um, virtually. Uh, so if you want to learn about more composting stuff, there's also other workshops at the office, um, like about biking and other sustainability type things that you can learn about. Um, all signed up. Uh, some of them are via Zoom. I think the biking ones are both um, in person. Uh, yeah, so the link is in the chat if you want to sign up for a workshop. Um, and then I am I think I'll be leading a breakout session and I'll be talking about a lot of things. Um, I'm really, obviously with my engineering background, I'm really into getting equitable clean energy for all people. Um, and I also been in, I have also been into like designing for the circular economy. And then if you have any questions about composting, I also know a lot about that. Um, and I'll be taught and you can ask me about other stuff we do at the office as well. I can go into more about the workshops or anything else we do there. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. And, um, yeah, I think next up we have Chris Powell. You're up. Hello. Um, my name is Kristen Powell. Um, I study uh, psychopharmacology with Dr. Lisa Baker um, in the psych department. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm currently a senior. Um, I'm doing uh, research in specifically behavioral uh, pharmacology, but we are talking about in the lab lately doing some more collaborations um, with other departments to do research into neurotoxicology. Specifically, I'm looking to do um, anything regarding pollutants, herbicides, or pesticides. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be available to go into the breakout rooms um, because I'm currently in the lab right now. Um, but if anybody is interested in um, this kind of collaboration or even trying to use this research to push for further regulations on herbicides or pesticides in the area, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is on the uh, slide mentioned. And yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, up next, we have Citizens Climate Lobby. Hello, everyone. Thank you to everyone who has made this possible. And thank you all for being here. It's really wonderful uh, to have so many people who are passionate about climate change and helping better our world all together at once on a Saturday. That's pretty cool. My name is Haley Fleck, and I am a global and international studies undergrad and currently in my senior year. I'm also the VP, the vice president of our new WMU chapter of Citizens Climate Lobbying. Citizens Climate Lobbying, better known as CCL, often in our conversations, is a nonprofit nonpartisan grassroots advocacy organization. Our mission here when we help, our mission in Citizens Climate Lobbying is to create political will for climate change through the exercise of political and personal action. A lot of times this involves calling our senators and our Congress people, as well as reaching out and writing emails or letters it is a bipartisan focus that works to bridge the gap between uh, the different parties and to encourage everybody to find a common goal through uh, helping better climate change. Um, our current focus is the carbon fee chart, or our current focus is our Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, also known as HR73. The goal behind this is to create a carbon fee and to charge a fee for the usage of carbon. The hope is to inspire new innovation uh, within the market and to also slowly introduce that within our politics. Um, the carbon dividend is, a, is the revenue that is collected from the fee and the goal is to go back to the American people. 
this group is a really great opportunity to connect with different departments and professors and other students that you might not get to interact with normally. Um, I know with my focus in global and international studies, a lot of times I don't get to connect with the science departments as often as I'd like. And this has been a really great opportunity to connect with different individuals. Um, one of the things that we are currently working on is pitching the idea of implementing carbon feet carbon fees within the university. Uh, it's a really awesome opportunity that we've been uh, able to collaborate with many different departments on, including the Office of Sustainability. Um, and it is really awesome to see that being in, potentially implemented within the university if possible. Um, we have a link in the chat. Uh, if you would like to join, we typically meet on the second Saturday of every month at 12 o'clock. Uh, and we are really happy to have you here together. Awesome. And we hope you join our breakout room. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Haley. So Citizens Climate Lobby will host our own breakout room, um, and it will be breakout room three if you want to learn more about um, the Carbon Fee Independent Act and implementing it on campus and other actions. And um, also take a look, keep a lookout on the chat for links, too. Um, up next, we have um, Erica Holter from the WMU chapter of American Institute of Graphic Arts. You're up. Hey, you guys. It's nice to meet you. Um, as she introduced us, uh, we are the American Institute of Graphic Arts. Uh, we're essentially a graphic design club here on campus. I'm the president, Erica Holter, and we also have our vice president, Liz, as well as our chair people, uh, Maddie, Audrey, and Millie here today. Uh, we meet every Tuesday at 7.15 p.m. and feel free to contact us on Instagram or by email uh, and we'll send you the WebEx link uh, to join. We don't currently have any board positions, but we do allow anybody to give ideas and to help plan events and participate. So yeah, uh, first I'll address what design is. It's an integration of art and business. So we're the people who are responsible for deciding how products are going to be presented what products are used by a company, things like magazines, book, uh, promotional materials, packaging, things of that nature. And so we want to join today to talk about how that process can be made more sustainable. Plastic and paper is the norm now. It's used everywhere. And frankly, it's extremely polluting to the earth and most of it's single use. And so as designers, we're talking about how to make Earth a client as part of our design process. So you usually take into account the economic impact, profit, social impact, but how can we talk about making sure that the things that we design have a life past us that's not polluting the Earth and can go back to the soil that it came from? So yeah. We'll also be in a breakout room with graphic and printing science students who will be showing off some of their work and talking about uh, the printing process and how to make more sustainable choices in regards to paper, ink, as well as technology, which we use a lot of. So yeah, uh, feel free to join us if you want to talk about that stuff. Thanks. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so the AIGA group of WM chapter will also have a breakout room along with the graphic and printing design class. Um, I believe it's, um, well, we'll see later. <laughs> I forgot what breakout room, um, but anyway, let's move on. So next up we have Andrew from Silen. I hope I said that right, um, from the paper engineering department. You're good. Hey, Ida, how's it going? Um, I want to thank everybody for giving us a chance to talk. Uh, so we are Cylon. Cylon invented paper in China 3,000 years ago. Um, so we are most engineering society. Uh, we actually, uh, so with me today, I've got Dan and Lauren, um, and they're both really interested in sustainability. And we'll be talking more about how uh, the recyclability of the industry is kind of shifting more towards that. Um, so if you have any more questions, we're going to be in uh, breakout room seven. Um, do you have the, the other three slides with this, Ida? You do? Okay. Uh, so we'll talk more about um, us and then the next slide as well. Um, so a lot of what, what Western does is so we are the students 
and then the organization, uh, and then we have PTF, which helps the students. And, but then we also have like the big recyclability uh, pile plants too. So that's what's bringing kind of this uh, full circle um, recyclable uh, uh, economy back in, into the swing too. So um, we'll kind of help answer some of the next slides questions. Um, so if people have questions about how it's made, how does recycling work uh, or anything like that, we're happy to help to help answer those questions. So thanks, Adam. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, up next, we have Abigail um, from, well, the owner of Adam, Atomic Sierra. Um, you're up. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. So my name is Abigail Jacqua. I'm a sophomore studying sales and business marketing, and I just launched a sustainable and ethical boutique called Atomic Sierra. Um, so basically what we are is we make women's clothing and accessories that are all made out of recycled materials and um, organic non-GMO GOTS certified fabrics. So it's a really amazing initiative and we're just really trying to spread the message about sustainability in general. Um, so here is one of our main goals to spread information about climate change, um, what the fast fashion industry is doing to our planet, what it's doing to ethics too, um, how it's affecting people's lives. So on top of that, um, all of our workers are paid a fair living wage with benefits to really ensure that um, our clothes aren't just made in China. They're not just, you know, um, part of this polluting, um, unethical industry, but we're, we're really trying to spread this information. So these are a couple posts from our Instagram. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Ida. We have, um, we're all also, our other main goal is really just woman empowerment as well. Um, so we really want to make sure every woman um, feels comfortable in our clothes and feels confident. So we want to spread the message that, you know, you're unique, you're special, um, you're amazing. So on top of like sustainability and ethics, really spreading the message about women empowerment. So if you guys want to check out our social media, every Sunday we do a sustainable Sunday post about small changes people can make um, in order to create a better future for ourselves, whether it's um, small purchases or whether it's just learning about more information about climate change or um, just different industries that are polluting our environment. So um, like I said, you can scan the QR codes below to check out our website and our Instagram um, and just check it out and help, help you um, learn more about the fast fashion industry and how it's really affecting our planet. So thank you so much for giving me the time to speak. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Abigail. Um, yeah, everyone check out her store. The link's on the slide and, you know, support local and support our, our students. <laughs> anyway, um, up next we have um, Jared Wiseman, you're up. Hey, everybody. Um, I wrote a quick speech, um, so I'll just start that. Uh, first off, I would like to thank everybody here for making this Sustainability Summit possible. I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Jared Wiseman. I'm a senior behavioral psychology major at WMU. I currently work at facility management in the recycling department with three other people, two of which are students. We oversee and facilitate the recycling and waste disposal methods to implement effective behavioral strategies uh, to help improve waste management. So I'm here to talk about sustainability on a more individualized level compared to the other speakers you've heard so far. Over my time at Western, I've noticed a gradual change in the awareness of the sustainable development issues that the world must address. We all know that the environment is put on the back burner compared to many of the challenges facing society today. A prime example being the 2019 global pandemic, um, or the 2020 global pandemic. Um, but the environmental needs are not the only needs being placed on the back burner these days. On a micro and macro level, we have shaped the society into fostering value systems to undermine core aspects of humanity. We as members of this society are beginning to wake up to the notion that we live in a system that do not promote prosperity of the masses, hope for the hopeless, and freedom to the people who deserve to be equally valued. The issue I'm getting at is a concept I call sustainable or personal sustainability. By modifying the World Commission on Environment and Development's 1987 definition of sustainability, I have created a definition 
that is tailored to each person's individual needs. A sustainable life is living in a way that meets the need of the present self without co compromising the ability of your future self to meet your own needs. See, we tax ourselves to the point of burnout and we are fighting an uphill battle, one that we can never hope to overcome given the current climate. Institutions such as our own value profit over prosperity and success is no longer about learning, but regurgitation, grades that determine self-worth at the expense of health, both mental and physical. I'm gonna be holding a breakout room on, I think number five, to go in depth about this con content. I have a small presentation to give. Um, I'd really be um, ecstatic if you guys came, heard me out. Um, definitely uh, a very big issue facing today, especially institutions like colleges, is about keeping ourselves sustainable and what that means. Thank you for your time and thank you to all who made this summit possible. Thank you so much, Jared. And yeah, um, to explore more on this topic, feel free to join Jared's breakout room. Um, what's that breakout room five, you said? I think so. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, breakout room five. Um, up next, we have Gianna. Hi, everyone. Wow, first off, I just want to say I'm absolutely blown away by all of the wonderful initiatives that are happening at Western. It just really gives me a lot of hope to know that people like you guys are going to be advocates for the future of sustainability. It just, it's really refreshing and great to see. So I am Gianna Shaw. I use she, her pronouns. I am a second year student and I'm studying global and international studies and journalism. I work as a communications ambassador at the Office for Sustainability, and I'm going to speak on behalf of the Global Leadership Program today. That's a mouthful, <laughs> but um, the Heineke Institute has created the Global Leadership Program in hopes of exposing undergraduate students to different cultures. This is so important as it is really overwhelming to even begin to tackle the problems of our increasingly globalized world. The Global Leadership Program gives students the opportunity to study abroad three separate times throughout their years, along with creating and presenting a global collaboration project with peers their senior year, which a lot of times are focused around topics such as sustainability or um, other issues surrounding um, globalization. And I am a member of the 2019 cohort and I've had the privilege of studying abroad to the Dominican Republic, Haiti and Portugal thus far, some through study abroad, some through this global leadership program. And the global leadership program implements ideas surrounding globalization and its impacts on economic, social and environmental growth. And when reflecting back on my personal experiences and how it relates to sustainability, I think mainly about seeing how environmental education is approached in different countries learning about cultural differences and how it comes back to environmentalism time and time again, and seeing sustainable development in action. One of my absolute favorite experiences has been traveling to Portugal this past February before COVID times. And I was able to travel to a city called Evra and see their grid system. And there's a picture of that on the right, just a little red system. Um, this initiative provides smart meters to the electricity consumers that live within the city of Evra and it's completely free of cost. These smart meters collect data about individual consumption profiles along with the collective grid demands from the city as a whole to automate electricity grid management. And this is in order to reduce operating costs and to promote energy efficiency and most importantly, environmental sustainability. And on the flip side, I've also seen a lack of environmental education in developing countries such as Haiti and the Dominican Republic. First of all, like the streets were absolutely littered with trash. Deforestation has continued to be on the rise and erosion has begun to impact the coral reefs. And I, of course, wanna recognize first and foremost, my privilege that I have been fortunate enough to have the education that I do and that we all do. And my experiences just with talking with these Dominicans and Haitians about their lack of environmental education has just made me so passionate about being an advocate for increasing this education for them. It has inspired me to even apply for the Peace Corps after I graduate to go into youth education so that I can expand environmentalism there. And I'm a firm believer in doing small initiatives and doing them well. And I think if we all continue on our path, there's going to be a positive impact from our generation to combat climate change. I truly do believe that. And 
it's transformational experiences like this at Western that makes my passion and hopefully yours too for sustainability just continue to grow. I believe that study abroad is such an important tool for academic and self-growth. And I would honestly not have the drive that I do to be better for the sake of our earth without it. And if you're interested in study abroad, I would highly encourage you to reach out to the Heineke Institute and find a program that fits. My email is on the left-hand side, jana.p.shot.wmich.edu. And I encourage you to visit broncosabroad.wmich.edu because even during COVID times, they are offering virtual programs. Some of them are even about climate and sustainability. So highly encourage you checking it out at some point. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. I would love to talk about my experiences and thank you to everyone in charge of this. It's been incredible so far and I can't wait for breakout rooms. Thank you so much, Gianna. And um, yeah, that was um, a very important message. And thank you for helping us out. Um, as you know, as you guys don't know, but Gianna is also a staffer in the Office for Sustainability and she's been helping out with this summit a lot too. So shout out to her. Um, up next, we have... The Refugee Outreach Collective. Hello, my name is Tyler Boos. I use uh, they, them pronouns. And um, the reason the refugee crisis is extremely important um, when talking about climate change is that we are already have damaged the earth a lot. And there's going to be between 1 and 1 1.5 billion climate refugees before 2050. So we have to create safe communities for refugees in immigrant communities because there's only going to be more and if we do not have those safe communities then what's going to happen is they're going to be screwed when they're when in 50 years we their homelands are unliv unlivable so i think we have to analyze that part of climate change the fact that people are already going to face negative consequences and we need to address that. And so Rock is a, um, or Refugee Outreach Collective is a national organization that has um, several chapters in various colleges across the state of Michigan. And we'd love for you to get involved with the one at WMU. Um, Rock's mission is they amplify diverse narratives of migrant and displaced community through alliance and relationship building. We work to make the US a more welcoming place to resettling communities and to eradicate refugee camps as a normative concept. So basically the meaning behind that is we want to make it so that we don't even need refugee camps because our societies are so welcoming and to everyone. And um, we have, because of COVID, a lot of our volunteer programs have had to be online um, recently, but um, in the fall, hopefully those will get in person again. So if you're gonna be at Western in the fall, I would strongly suggest you contact um, our president, Mary. And our programs that we've done mostly recently are is the language exchange program where you talk to someone on, you work helping teach English to someone on the other side of the world. And you also learn a language too. And then the main program is the uh, Family Partnership Program, which has been online over the past year, where we work with uh, students in the Kalamazoo area who are often have different primary languages than English and help them with their homework. And then we have also had um, National Rock has had a podcast that they've been working on. So we also do advocacy on various um, topics that are intersectional with the refugee crisis. For example, we have an event sometime in March um, regarding Israel and Palestine. And then we also care about sustainability and those issues. As I've said, they intersect a lot with the refugee crisis. So make sure to contact Mary. She's here as well. Thank you so much, Tyler, for that. Um... <sighs> So up next, um, we have Naren from the Malaysian Student Association represent. Hello, hello everyone. Um, I'm Naren. I'm from. Uh, I'm a president at the Malaysian Student Association at Western Michigan University. 
Uh, we are a student community of Malaysians on the campus studying abroad here in Kalamazoo. Here, I would like to offer a global Malaysian perspective on climate change and how it would impact the Southeast, Southeast Asia region. So the latest IPCC report identified Southeast Asia as among the region where we will be hit uh, among the most. Um, so uh, this means that in, in, in Malaysia, especially um, there's more rain, there's more um, sun, there's more heat. And as we know, El Nino, La Nina, um, it happens in the same time, it co-occurs uh, in the same year and it's strange. And um, this strange phenomenon has been happening uh, more and more um, recently. Uh, we also expect more rainfalls, uh, intense rainfall for the wet period and lack of rainfall in the dry period, everything happening in the same year, which um, um, just a background, uh, Malaysia, um, we don't have four seasons, we only have rain and uh, sunlight over the whole um, course of year. So this, this co-occurrence uh, co of dry spell and heavy rainfall within the same year, um, it's worrying um, because um, like uh, it, it causes flood, uh, landslide and all those things. So um, there's a, a lot of uh, mitigation effort that has been made um, uh, in the in institution level. Uh, we have NGOs and everybody focusing on um, uh, climate um, change, uh, climate change efforts. Um, as we, as I put in the slides, uh, the main three um, policies that has been um, uh, implemented by the Malaysian government is a national policy on climate change. Um, they strive on five, the five principles, development on a sustainable part, uh, conservation of environment and national resources, coordinated implementation, effective participation, and common but differenti differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. Um, that principle is uh, widely advocated by the United Nations, so they are centering that over our policies. And then our 11th Malaysian plan, uh, which was just uh, from 2016 to 2020, which just ended last year, um, they emphasize on green growth uh, for sustainability and res resilience has been included. So a lot of our companies are focusing on that. And then um, the National Land Public Transport Master Plan, which is up till 2030, um, they enhance the public, pl uh, public transport planning so that uh, we rely more on public transport rather than uh, private uh, vehicles. Um, yeah, that's just a sort of um, uh, a view on what's happening um, in the Southeast uh, Asian side. Um, I'm here to learn more um, and to listen to all these wonderful um, ideas. Thank you so much for having this space. Uh, looking forward for more information. Thank you so much, Naren, for sharing that. Um, I put that in the chat, like right now in Malaysia, our average um, temperature all year round is around 80 to 90 degrees. We're hot and humid all year round. And with climate change, it would be almost unbearable to live um, in our country. Or like, if you think about all the labor workers and workers who have to work outside. Um, so there'll be increased heat strokes and coastal houses um, will be underground. And we are taking measures and we are taking measures, which, which is why, climate action as a global um, collective climate action, sorry, collective climate action is really important to us. And um, we support any initiatives that the United States or Western um, or any other big institutions would have. So anyway, let's move on. Um, up next we have um, Sunrise Kalamazoo and um, Andrew, you're up. Hey guys, I'm Andrew. I'm one of the hub coordinators uh, at the, the Sunrise or the Kalamazoo hub of the Sunrise Movement. And we're not, a, <laughs> thank you, John. We're not a registered student organization um, at Western. We're more of like a citywide thing. But um, if you have heard, you might've heard of the Sunrise Movement before. We're a youth led national movement to fight climate change and win a Green New Deal. And there are hubs all over the country, and we're one here uh, in Kalamazoo. And the Green New Deal as a concept is public policy that would transition our economy away from fossil fuel-based energy generation to renewable sources, and also uh, reduce economic inequality in the process, similar to the FDR New Deal, but um, this is like an environmental version. And uh, here in KZU, we take action by engaging with our elected city and state officials. And we do a lot of political stuff, which is, which is basically all we do is political stuff. And 
you might see um, the pic uh, on the screen, which is a protest we did at Fred Upton's office uh, in the winter. And that was pretty awesome. And um, we know uh, Fred has received millions from polluting energy companies to deregulate carbon and other harmful gas emissions. And that's why we have a big fake check in the back that you can't really see in the pic, but it was funny. And so right now our future plans um, at the moment basically revolve around working with other Sunrise Hubs and environmental groups in Michigan to pass a statewide Green New Deal. And we're still in the process of writing the legislation for a statewide Green New Deal, but we expect to have it around Earth Day. And when we do have it, we'll be pressuring um, our politicians to take on this uh, legislation. Um, and we meet weekly on Mondays at seven and we discuss projects that we're working on and we talk about the environment or whatever else. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I have to say, but if you are interested in getting involved with what we're doing or any of the projects that we're doing, then feel free to reach out at that Sunrise KZU email or my phone number and yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Andrew. Um, just for your information, we have um, a lot of students from Western who are active members of the Sunrise chapter, um, including myself last year and John um, and Keaton actually, and they've done a lot of work here um, and they were also involved in the planning of the climate strike. And we thank you so much for, for being here, Andrew. Up next, we have um, student PIRGs, um, I think Avery, you're up. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I'm Avery. We're the student PERGs or um, PERGUM is another acronym we use, but basically who we are, we are a student run grassroots activism organization. We operate on campuses across the country, um, basically training students on how to run and coordinate their own grassroots campaigns on public interest stuff. So we do a ton of different campaign um, topics. We do higher education affordability. Last semester we did youth voter turnout. Um, this week, actually, we lobbied U.S. Congress members for the state of Michigan, including Gary Peters, to double funding for the Pell Grant. Obviously, we do sustainability too, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, so currently, we are launching our Break Free from Plastics campaign here at Western with the hope of passing a resolution to phase out and eventually eliminate single-use plastics on campus. Um, this campaign is run by me. We are fairly new in Kalamazoo, um, so we are always looking for new people to join us and volunteer with us. We have internship opportunities. That's what I do. It's part-time internship. It's great resume experience. Or even if you just want to volunteer some of the time, we do have an event coming up this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, we're going to be doing a petition drive where we're reaching out to people to get our petition signed. And I will put that petition in the track and our information in the track or the track, the chat. Um, so basically, yeah, we run all sorts of campaigns, do a lot of political work grassroots work, relational organizing. Um, and we are open to any RSOs that want to meet up and build coalitions, have joint meetings, any sort of thing like that. Like I said, we're pretty small this semester at Kalamazoo. So anyone who is interested in joining us, feel free to reach out to me, direct message me here in, the, um, in Zoom on the chat or follow us on Instagram, DM us on there, any way that you would like to reach out. And then if you would like to volunteer with us, there is a check box in our petition to sign up for saying that you're interested in internship or volunteer opportunities. And I'm also gonna be hosting a breakout room. We are breakout room eight to talk more about the policy side of things and our organization and how you can help join and coordinate campaigns to build a more green and sustainable climate. And our hope is to eventually launch a 100% renewable campaign in the distant future, but right now we're just focusing on our um, single use plastics campaign. So yeah, great things coming up and thank you to, to all you guys for putting this on. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Avery. Um, yeah, um, you can check out Breakout Room 8 um, after after the session to learn more about student perks. I didn't know it was called that. So thanks for clarifying. Um, up no next, uh, we have the 
graphic design class. Um, I think Chandra, you're up. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And this is uh, Graphic and Printing Science GPS 1500 student group. Uh, just to give some information, G, uh, GPS teaches basic uh, uh, printing and package manufacturing process. Uh, the pack, printing and packaging manufacturing uh, and process is majorly controlled by brand owner business. For example, when you go to a retail store, say a Target or Walmart or any other store, whatever product you see, they are printed and packaged to sell the goods to the uh, consumers. So in printing and packaging, we use files, paper, plastic, ink, machinery, and they all transport different types of materials to end user. And they are all managed with the help of advanced computing and managed by graphic communication engineers. So it is important for the students to understand uh, the process of printing and packaging, manufacturing process, and how to optimize the process within, and the machinery involved in printing and packaging. Uh, that will help uh, to minimize uh, their impact on the climate change. So the graphic and printing science is a, a subject that is offered uh, every semester, spring and fall. So it's a WMU's essential studies that covers scientific literacy with lab. So one of the uh, lab exercise in GPS 1500 uh, course is magazine design uh, that is uh, focused on WMU's sustainability uh, in shares. So while designing the magazine ad, uh, students learn and understand the WMU sustainability initiatives uh, by going to their website, understanding what, the, what they are doing, uh, what their future plans are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then uh, students use their creative thinking through uh, ideation to design that help that help them to come up with their own ideas on sustainability. And uh, and and they use that idea to to promote WMU sustainability initiative through their design. So in this slide, you can see on the left side there are like some there are many designs that are designed by uh, students. It's their own creative idea. Their it's their own uh, uh, understanding of sustainability. So we will be in the breakout room six where we're going to display all the students design in detail so if you would like to have a look at them and then uh, uh, listen from the students who designed it feel free to join us uh, in the breakout room six and thank you thank you for office of sustainability for setting up a wonderful event like this and thank you thank you so much So it looks like we have some time for some last minute speakers. We're gonna open up any final announcements if anybody would like to hop in. Just unmute yourself and talk. If not, then we can go into a short five minute break we will reconvene at 105 to start the next portion of the event. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're just gonna give a minute here for everyone to come back in. Um, yeah, welcome back. Now that you've heard from our student leaders, we invite you to get into breakout rooms of your choice to learn more about students and groups and explore deeper into the topics offered by our student leaders. Um, so you may switch breakout rooms at any moment and you can choose your own breakout rooms. All you have to do is click on the breakout room icon located at the bottom of your Zoom screen and choose the rooms you'd like to visit. Um, I'd also like to flag that some of your accounts may not be up to date and you might not have the ability to choose your own breakout rooms. So if you can't see the breakout room option on the bottom bar, please let us know in the chat and we'll uh, move you to a breakout room. And um, right here on the screen, as you can see, is um, all the breakout room titles. Um, feel free to explore. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope everyone found the breakout rooms inspirational and they learned something new and insightful. 
Um, so now we're going to open up the floor to talk about some things that you might have learned in your breakout rooms that you've been in. Um, you can either use the raise hand option or you can type in the chat. But um, while you do that, I'm just going to talk about a little bit what I learned. I was kind of hopping around, but um, the last room I was in was paper engineering. And it was just really interesting to see how everything on campus is kind of interconnected and how something as small as paper engineering like knows how to take steps to make things either more recyclable or not. So I thought that was really cool. And then there's that link in the chat again to volunteer at the Gibbs House for gardening and composting. And then the open bike shop as well. I didn't get to go into the personal sustainability room for very long. So does anybody want to give me or like the big group a, a recap of that? Because I know that one was a little bit different from all the other groups here. Um, I, could, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, mainly with personal sustainability, what I wanted to get at was there are a lot of behaviors that we engage on that are, are engage in that are considered normal now. Right. An example of this being, you know, in Kalamazoo, especially for those who live here, you guys ever look outside on the ground and see how much trash is everywhere? Right. That's become an acceptable behavior for a lot of people. What's one more, you know? And that those examples or norms that we accept as a society are kind of a huge deal and a huge problem. Um, not just in the sense of there's trash on the ground, we got to deal with it, but there's institutions that kind of profit on the, the success of other people. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, the, the old communist manifesto, I'm talking about, you know, we produced a society that's not conducive for happiness. It's not conducive to really prosper. You know, we were taxing ourselves at a different level just to keep up with the status quo, you know, uh, to afford rent, basic needs, even things that, you know, we work nine to five most days, the most, the average American, right? And they pay bills, they do their thing, but, you know, we still aren't finding a sense of fulfillment in life anymore. Um, and a lot of people are, are kind of, um, struggling with that. And so one of the things I wanted to get people to do is evaluate their behaviors that they engage with in the day-to-day -day life and realize, you know, how much energy are they putting in and what kind of systems are they participating in? You know, are they living a sustainable lifestyle? As in, can I keep doing this? You know, is this really going to be able to sustain me as a human? And is this society and our participation in it conducive to a holistic lifestyle? Is it gonna produce happiness or is it just gonna perpetuate a problem? And so that's what I kind of wanted to get um, through to everybody in the breakout room. So thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Jared, for that. That was amazing. Does anybody in the peanut gallery have any thoughts on that? Sounds like a lot of people resonate with it and agree with it. Makes me um, wish I went to that breakout room. Well, speaking of which, um, so just for the group, would all of you like to meet again, maybe periodically or again sometime, maybe have this be an annual thing, maybe biannually? Seeing a lot of yeses, perfect, that's amazing. Olivia, uh, hmm. I, yes, I could say the Office for Sustainability um, hopes to repeat this annually, at least the summit portion at this time of year in an annual basis. Um, and we've only thought so far ahead is to think about topics that might be the same or different next time around. Um, if, if this one is primarily climate action, the next one might be biodiversity. The next one after that might be um, environmental justice. Um, and so look to that from us, but more frequently than annually makes sense to me. Um, 
and we would love to help in any way we can convening or helping coordinate such meetings. So it looks like um, I, I saw a bunch of people hanging out in the Citizens Climate Lobby breakout room, and I just want to hear um, what y'all have to say from that group. Anyone from Citizens Climate Lobby want yeah. to share? Yeah, sure. Um, no, I was I was very happy uh, to have such a great turnout in our in our room. Um, I just wanted to um, make sure that if anybody wants to sign up for our university chapter, um, that they have the link. I just provided it in the chat. Um, also, you can feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm also going to provide my email in the chat. Um, but yeah, um, you know, it's all about building the political will for a livable world. That's what we're about at Citizens Climate Lobby. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. What about the graphic design group? I saw a lot of y'all went in there too. Um, anyone want to speak on it? Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you talk. Go ahead. <laughs> I know uh, for at least AIJ, we uh, discussed about switching to unbleached paper um, specifically because it harms wildlife. Um, so expecting like white paper is another cultural norm that we have to challenge. And that also applies to your toilet paper and paper towels and things like that. Um, we talked about how recycling is one option, but reducing waste in the design process is more favorable. Um, because recycling isn't that effective. Um, we also talked about tech waste and trying to buy, use, reduce demand and fix rather than replace. Um, we talked about design ethics and taking earth as a sort of client, quote unquote, just in the same way that you wouldn't engage in a socially um, inappropriate project try to advocate for the earth and say, you know, if this isn't doing what we expect as designers, um, reject it or, you know, have certain values that you expect from uh, your process. So, yeah. Also, like we talked about how uh, printing graphic overlap and also I would like to say that printing uh, graphics and advanced computing, other uh, stuff to overlap because uh, many brand owners use advanced computing to manage their materials or manufacturing their goods, packages, and printing to uh, to reduce waste and to quantify like what is happening, like what how much materials they are using, and what is the carbon footprint in terms of manufacturing the goods. So the advanced company advanced computing does help in in understanding, quantifying what's happening in an organization that will help them to uh, understand and reduce the waste. Thank you guys so much for talking about that. That was super interesting. Andrew, I see you have your hand raised, so you can go ahead and your floor is yours. Yeah, I want to jump on uh, Erica's bit about uh, brown paper. Uh, people don't realize the simplicity, the simple thing of like a white piece of paper requires a lot of energy. Um, there's a ton of input. And I know it's be kind of surprising like the paper guy wants wants change, but <laughs> um, there's a lot of simple things like that that are important. I, I think you know a, a big thing to get out of that um, is the, that's the, the cultural change that pushes like a, a data based obvious like a fact, you know, and it's not obvious to most people. Um, so I, yeah, I, I would just definitely jump on. It's a great. Thank you so much. Um, I noticed I was in the WSA group for a little bit. Does anyone want to talk about what we talked about in there? I can speak on one of the points that I, I thought was really interesting. And, you know, we are all kind of in, a, in an agreement in, in a lot of ways about what we should be talking about. You know, we all have relatively the same thoughts on we should use less, we should, you know, not use oil, th these type of things. But I think where we need to focus more, and we talked a lot about this, is how we talk about, like, how are we giving our message to other people? How are we building that momentum? And what role 
do the individuals play and what roles do the institutions or companies or organizations play? Because something that was fascinating to me and, and I touched on in our group as well is a lot of the companies and organizations that have been so harmful to our environment have made us believe that it's our responsibility to fix everything. And I think this is why a policy you know, focused forum would be really important so we can really get a grasp around like, okay, 10 companies are making 70% of the carbon. Like even if, even if, you know, we were not driving cars, like we would still have a problem. So, you know, we, we talked a lot about what we can do as students. And I think, you know, 80 people or whatever we had showing up today really speaks to there being an, an interest among um, the student populace. Beautiful. I'm just going to echo Jeff because he said, Thank you to WSA for being so thrilled to lead everything on this. And I just want to make sure that that's a point that everyone knows. Um, Ida, you've had your hand up for a minute. You want to go ahead? Yeah, I just want to share real quick in the paper engine, uh, in the paper engineering room. Um, I asked a question about, um, you know, the controversial between of, of paper engineering and the paper industry, right? And we know that um, our river is right now polluted with PCBs. And um, I asked what are the measures being done and how um, and how did they move to this change? And um, Andrew answered, um, sorry, Andrew, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of you, but he said that um, they only start to make change after policies were implemented and regulations were implemented. So, um, you know, a single like, a single legislation, a single rule can change so much um, with our, you know, environment. And I just wanted to like add that. I think Crystal had her hand up first and Andrew again. Uh, I just wanted to say, it seems like uh, I like to see how much everybody cares in this group. It's very obvious. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of interest in a lot of overlapping sustainability things. And it can be kind of overwhelming. Sometimes you wanna get all the information all at once. But I think it's good if we all work together, we all have different interests, um, that we can each tackle something that we individually know about and love, and we can work together to do that. Um, and then because I was leading a talk, I couldn't listen to anybody else's. Um, so I thought it might be a cool idea to maybe if someone, like we were talking about other meetings and stuff, like if people that led their their own talk, want to give it to the wider group. Um, maybe that could be an idea, like maybe like monthly or whatever, we could start giving individual talks or something. That's all. <laughs> That's a great idea. Thank you so much, Crystal. Um, Andrew, I noticed you unraised your hand. Did you still want to add something? Um, I would just say that I just had it pretty spot on. Um, there's the comment about 70% of energy comes from one-time corporations from Henry. Uh, I like that fact. Uh, it definitely points to the fact that, yeah, I, I'm a you know big fan of waste less and everything like that too, but I don't think people realize all the things that go on that, that they don't see um, too. And then also we'd love to sign up for a, another talk sometime too, I'll be short, but I think those are Friday for Futures. Is that correct, Denise? So. Sign us up. Beautiful, thank you so much. Mary Beth, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, my name is Mary Beth. I'm a part of the Climate Change Minor. Um, so Eden and I are putting together a little video to kind of promote the minor. If you're interested in being a part of it and just telling us why you care or what would you love about a future that would address climate change, um, we're just asking students to do about 30 seconds of talking for the video. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in being a part of that, please drop your emails in the chat. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm also part of the minor. So it's a great thing to be a part of and a great place to learn and a great way to learn about different things. Um, Andrew, you can go ahead. Funny because um, Mary Beth kind of just said what I was something similar to what I was gonna say, which was that um, I was resonating with what Henry said earlier about uh, how the new climate environmental movement can be more positive and kind of like 
and focus on the benefits and like the positives as opposed to like environmental movements in the past have kind of been more negative and like this is what we can't have but our environmental movement could be more about what we do have or what we could create amazing thank you so much for sharing um anybody else have anything that they wanted to talk about from the oh chelsea go ahead <laughs> I was just going to make a little shout out real quick because um, I know a lot of you have been mentioning resolutions and wanting to get involved in that way. We have been talking about doing a WSA climate resolution on lowering the carbon neutrality to kind of support the WMU Carbon Neutrality Committee, um, which I sit on and a couple other people in this room also sit on. So if that's something that you're interested in directly working with um, this semester, which is when we hope to do it, I dropped my email in the chat. Uh, little ways up so please feel free to reach out i'll also talk about it more in um, the post summit packet that i'll be delivering to everyone if um you think it's a great idea if you know we we want to we want to include as many um voices and inputs as possible so it's uh, more well represented there's a lot of good information in this chat can we save it um for links or I guess I can I can save it on my end. Uh, also, I wanted to follow up for WMU CCL on carbon pricing at Western, just that we're interested in other people's ideas on how to achieve this and how to um, spread the message effectively since it's mostly an economics or environmental economics message. It can get lost in translation sometimes. Uh, as a former student of that class, I find myself even now looking at the materials or resources I have getting a little bogged in um, the terminology. So uh, I was thinking about maybe putting up the, the carbon pricing at WMU presentation I just did with a little more details and on a, like an unlisted YouTube link or something and just opening it up to chat if, if I could get an email list or maybe just email each of these groups here today to get feedback. Um, I'll reach out to you after this meeting. I'm gonna also drop another plug for a message that Taylor sent a little bit ago for our environmental justice uh, event. That is the registration link. I know a couple of people have mentioned uh, justice and stuff like that in relation to everything that we've talked about in the climate crisis. So please register. We're going to have a lot of really highly educated and experienced people talking about it and hopefully some people from our community and a couple people from this call talking about it as well and hopefully a community action event in April. So please register. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody else have any concerns, opportunities, maybe hope that they want to share with the group? Um, maybe talk about what groups might have been missing or what groups you were excited to see here. Just opening up the floor pretty broad for any final mm. thoughts. Uh, I've got one, Olivia. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste a link in the chat to this university recycling video that we made uh, earlier the, this year. And um, not a lot of people have seen it. And it's kind of surprising because it's really educational about how to recycle the do's and don'ts of recycling on campus. You just kind of want to spread the word out. So if you guys want to give it a quick watch, it's fun, it's funny, you know, tell your friends. All right, thank you. Before we leave, uh, sorry to interrupt, before we leave, um, Brock would love to do some sort of collaboration with any one of the climate change organizations because, you know, the refugee crisis and climate change do go hand in hand. So if you're interested in that, please send me an email. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you so much. Um, any other final thoughts? I was actually just going to ask, um, for our social media, would you guys be okay with uh, maybe throwing up some poses so I can screenshot? <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, we'll do it in three, two, one. All right, great. Thank you guys so much. And if anybody wants that, feel free to 
uh, DM AIGAWMU on Instagram. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Erica. Um, so if that's everything that everyone wants to share. I just want to say thank you again for being here on a Saturday. I really appreciate it. Oh, Chelsea, you have your hand raised. Go ahead. I'm sorry. One more time. I swear. I know it's almost two o'clock. Um, just one more time for anybody who's interested. I know one person is interested in my position for next year, WSA Vice President for Sustainability. It's super fun. You get to be involved with a lot of different organizations. You get to help do stuff like this. So please email me if you're interested. And thank you all for coming. Yes, go ahead, Keaton. Uh, thank you. I just have one um, last little comment. Um, as I mentioned, SSE, we are holding weekly meetings uh, where we will highlight like just the individual's general knowledge on a topic in um, relating to environmentalism. So for example, like me, I'm studying like pollution prevention. So maybe I'll give a presentation on like carbon capture technology where we'll have other members who are familiar with biodiversity, soil reparation, if they're an expert in recycling, they'll give their own kind of niche talk weekly. So if anyone here is interested in giving like a talk on composting or the climate lobby wants to talk about things like that, just reach out to us and we would be open to allowing you to give a weekly um, talk at one of our um, meetings. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you can find us at Experience WU. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to highlight, I'm pretty sure all of this information for uh, how to contact everybody who presented today or was here today and representing their RSO that should be in the post summit packet that you guys should receive to your email. So there's also going to be a follow-up email that you can provide event feedback, maybe talk about what groups you might want to see here. Um, and then we can engage next steps and actions. We intend to share um, the email with other summit participants. Um, like Mary Beth said, uh, with the climate change minor, you might hear from us as well. And it's going to help us all stay together and get connected with each other after the summit. So again, thank you so much for coming. I know it was a Saturday afternoon, but we really do appreciate you being here. Thank you.